world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. The first thing I thought when I read this is that this is just a bit weird. Uh, I mean, I think it's it's weird in, in a number of respects. I mean, look, if you spoke to any, for example, sitting British MP, you could ask them how well... Facebook is doing protecting them from death threats and abuse because they they yeah you know, there'd be a hollow laugh in response and it seems to me that this is all a bit of very clever spin. Essentially, Facebook have announced they're temporarily choosing to not enforce a policy that they're not really enforcing in the first place. So so the which organisations like your own have encouraged them to do so, uh, but they they would say they're doing better than they ever did. But the, even if they were doing better, does it regardless of what we think of what's happening with Russia and Ukraine, isn't it a bit odd when a, a big company like Facebook give the green light to call for the death of Russian invaders? Well, it, it does beg the question. If Meta are temporarily Facebook are temporarily choosing not to protect Putin. Which murderous dictators are they protecting? Yeah. Is it the Ayatollah? Is it Xi Jinping for his actions with the Uyghurs? Is it the, the, the Burmese government for their actions against the Rohingyas? What is Mr. Clegg and Mr. Zuckerberg's private test of which bloodthirsty autocrats they deem worthy of protecting? What is the threshold? And why on earth have we handed over so much power mm. to one man? in California, the enorm, and, and, you know, the, the, the sort of underlying, I, I, I am being mildly facetious, but the, the, the thought that we've handed over such power sure. to, to one man is extraordinary. And I think, it, you, you know, if nothing else, um, th th this, th this might feel like a, a short term boost for their political fortunes. But I, I actually think it opens up questions they really don't want to answer. It's very Nick Clegg, isn't it? He's just been promoted to Facebook's president of global affairs, one of the top you know, two or three people there now. Yep. It's all very sly. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's all very clever spin. What I, the other element of this that I find fascinating and disturbing in equal measure, Imran, is this... I mean. To, to give this the, a, a kind of free pass, so it's OK if you want to call for the death of Putin or Russian soldiers, we're fine with that. And we know how social media works, and not everybody is engaged with the rule book as they should be, the rule book of basic decency or the rule book of, you know, what you, you should or shouldn't do in public. You can almost see this translating elsewhere, right, where somebody on the street might be out for a, a pint uh, in, in their local town in this country and think that it's fair game to give somebody a smack because they happen to be Russian because, well, you know, after all, Facebook seemed quite relaxed about it. Well, look, th there are... I, I mean, yes, that is possible. And, of course, that person would be utterly wrong on a number of levels in that respect. But, I, I mean, there is an offline consequence for online for online harms and, and for the True. things that people feel that they can say online, because of course it's people saying it. And if we create norms of behavior where calling for the deaths of politicians is considered normal or without consequences, which is which is how norms get formed because there are a lack of consequences for it, then that's deeply problematic. I mean, I, I think Facebook need to be, need to be just a little bit more transparent. And the, the real questions they should be asking themselves are, how on earth did we, for so many years, allow Putin to pump propaganda into Western countries that, that is full of disinformation and lies? Let's let's just remember that RT isn't a Russian channel. It's a English language channel owned by the Russian state to pump English language disinformation into our countries. It's a weapon of information war, and we should have been treating it as such for a long time. It's a fair point. Imran, thank you. Always a pleasure to get your take on these things. Imran Ahmed, Chief Executive of the Centre for Countering Digital Hate. I don't even know where to begin. Good talk. Hot talk. 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 radio. Listen on your smart speaker. Watch it live on your smart TV. The world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio.